Benjamin, George, and Thomas are not America's founding fathers. Listen, I'm the pimp who built this shit and trust. At every chance, I'm unzipping my pants so I can pull out my penis and piss in your mouth. I'm nasty like that. You are my puppet, and I got you held up by my strings. Keep that gun at your temple. It's simple. I'm the pimp who built this and I put drug dealers on corners so they can make my money and I put white collars in corner offices so they can make my money and while you're out here doing nine to five I'm working overtime to make sure the hungry never get fed to make sure them colored kids never go to college keep that knowledge shit out their head I'm bad Lucifer and got a damn thing on me I fucked myself and gave birth to slavery you thought when they genocided Native Americans they were moving west motherfucker they were moving toward me they call me capitalism hello good people and of course welcome back to our channel if you're here for the first time I repeat subscribe so guys today I want us to talk about capitalism is capitalism inherently racist Angela Davis thinks so. Yeah, racism is integrally linked to capitalism. Uh, and, and I think it's a mistake to assume that we can combat racism by leaving capitalism in place. I want to see your take in the comment section. Please talk to us. Before that, let me roll your clip here and please let's discuss. Take the time to listen to the message. If it does not resonate with you, then you are part of the problem. It's not a race thing. It's a human thing. Let's go ahead and get straight to it. Benjamin, George, and Thomas are not America's founding fathers. Listen, I'm the pimp who built this shit and trust. At every chance, I'm unzipping my pants so I can pull out my penis and piss in your mouth. I'm nasty like that. You are my puppet. And I got you held up by my strings. Keep that gun at your temple. It's simple. I'm the pimp who built this and I put drug dealers on corners so they can make my money and I put white collars in corner offices so they can make my money and while you're out here doing nine to five I'm working overtime to make sure the hungry never get fed to make sure them colored kids never go to college keep that knowledge shit out their head I'm bad Lucifer and got a damn thing on me I fucked myself and gave birth to slavery you thought when they genocided Native Americans they were moving west Motherfucker, they were moving toward me. They call me capitalism. And I slit throats with dollar signs. I'll tie the American dream around your neck and laugh while you lynch yourself for a dime. Your soul is mine. All your thoughts belong to me. I'm the reason women take off clothes and keep a pole between their legs. I'm the reason executive directors bring their work home and never work on working on their homes. My favorite color is green. My only hobby it's sex and I do one hell of a job fucking people over. I rape the rich and I ejaculate on the poor as to keep my system in check. And the rest of y'all in the middle are like toilet tissue. I wipe my ass with you. Do you understand? I am capitalism. Racism is my son. Gentrification is his sister. The jail system is my illegitimate daughter and public schools are my badass grandkids. Can't you see? All of your oppression is related back to me. I'm the king in this bitch. And I'm so slick with the shit. I got you thinking you only work for what you need. Need. My blood is made of envy. I breathe death into your grief. You are a slave to me. Bow down. Get this money. Sell your soul. Here's a nickel and a dime. Turn that shit into gold. Become cold. Ruthless. Destroy any worthless human being you have to. You worship me because I control everything. And I know you thought the devil was bad as hell, but the motherfucker ain't got shit on me. And the more you reach for that monetary peak, you become more like me. And when poverty is thick, and a single mother has to sell her body to dick to feed her fatherless kids. Remember, America never had founding fathers. It always had me and believe I'm the pimp who built this shit. And you, well, you ain't nothing but my bitch. If that does not speak to you, then I don't know what will. We all go through the same struggle. It doesn't matter whether you're white, you're black, you're Asian, Indian, Filipino, it doesn't matter. 
We all go through the same struggle under the same system. And eventually, we need to wake up and unite to stop the bull sh Y'all. This goes out to every single melanated individual in this country. I need you guys to do something right now. No longer identify yourself as a African American. You're not African. Truth is the only thing that will set this country free. We cannot live in the lie anymore. Who are the true Americans? Or who are the, tr the first people that were here on this land? Because at some point, we will need to return the land to its original occupants. Tamaria. Tamaria. If you are a melanated individual in the land of America right now, drop the African American out your mouth. You were not brought here. You were already here. And I'm going to give you some facts right now that will shake the ground in this country. Do your own research. We're gonna go to Florida. Now in Florida, and I hope that one of you people in the White House touch on this, because you won't be able to. In Florida, they were building a new building, right? And during that excavation of the land, they discovered a mass grave in Florida full of skeletons. This was such a amazing find that they pulled in archeologists to go find out how old these remains were. When they researched the remains of these skeletons, they found out that these skeletons were so old, they had to be the first occupants of the land, America, correct? What color do you think when they investigated these bones, what kind of people do you think these bones belong to? African Americans. And that's the title that they gave you. So when you drop the African out of it and know that you are the true first Americans on the soil, proven that will heal this country. You were not brought here. You've been here. And I say right now, Give back the land. Give it back. And not only, only that, if you look into the land patents, it will disclose everything you need to know. I'm out. Is capitalism inherently racist? Angela Davis thinks so. Racism is integrally linked to capitalism, uh, and, and I think it's a mistake to assume that we can combat racism by leaving capitalism in place. Um, Activists and leaders have taken racial justice one step further, demanding an end to capitalism. And many black liberation thinkers have been critical of capitalism, like W.E.B. Du Bois, Malcolm X, and Hugh P. Newton. You got to freeze capitalism, Nixon! Freeze capitalism! That's a problem! That's a problem! So, what does racism have to do with our economic system? First, we have to define what capitalism even is. 
It's an economic system in which private individuals and corporations control the means of production, aka the resources and tools used to generate wealth. And as the system evolved with time, those who had been enslaved or serfs now worked for wages. But those wages never equaled the value of the goods they produced, which is how the owners who made the profits kept growing their wealth. But COVID-19 is bringing the U.S. economy to its knees. At least 14 million people lost their jobs between February and May of 2020 due to coronavirus. So what we're seeing is that the pandemic has really brought to the surface that people are doing much, much worse than is being projected. And this is obviously following along racial, class, and regional lines. Those who are racialized as Black are suffering at a, a, a disproportionate rate or a different rate because of economic and structural factors. She's right. Fewer than one in five Black people have a job where they can work from home, increasing the likelihood of contracting the virus. Black Americans are almost four times more likely to be hospitalized for COVID-19 than white people. Even in a moment of sort of national crisis, the police violence, the state violence has not abated. And I think that that has really um, incited some, some radicalism in people. Black people are disproportionately dying at the hands of police and because of health disparities. The demand for the end to capitalism is an understanding that this system of economic exploitation and subjection is really at the root of these forms of racialized uh, state violence and state-sanctioned uh, savagery and killing. So how did we get here? Well, through a forcible process called Marx called primitive accumulation, where a monetary surplus was created by enslaved people who were paid nothing. Basically, slavery was the American economy's startup money. In the 60 years leading up to the Civil War, the amount of daily cotton picked by enslaved black people increased by 400%. This stolen wealth made millionaires out of white plantation owners and helped propel the U.S. as a leader in the global economy. And even MLK said, the fact is that capitalism was built on the exploitation and suffering of black slaves and continues to thrive on the exploitation of the poor. The U.S. has always had to contend with this contradiction of what I would call value minus work, right? That Black people produce an immense amount of value for the economy through super exploitation, expropriation, and dispossession. So there's always there's an economic function that Blackness performs. But then the worthlessness piece is like the U.S. has to conceal that, right? In order to rationalize repression and domination, there has to be all of this legitimating architecture about Black folks as criminal and lazy and rapist and disposable. Um, and so it's this contradiction, right, that I think has structured um, the U.S. economy. This is a concept called racial capitalism, coined by Cedric J. Robinson. It's a form of capitalism where racism and commodification of non-white people are at its core. World War II, which devastated Europe's economies but left the U.S. mainland untouched, turned the U.S. into the world's major capitalist power. This acceleration of capitalism started to generate resistance among working people, including intellectuals. They advocated and pushed for an alternative to capitalism, which, keep in mind, used profit as a way to organize the economy. This alternative was socialism. In case you're wondering what socialism actually means, it advocates for public rather than private ownership of the means of creating wealth and a more equitable distribution of that wealth. Although societies ruled by communist parties like the Soviet Union supposedly practiced socialist economies, their systems were also brutally authoritarian, which is why the communist model is rejected by those who proclaim themselves democratic socialists. Because insofar as accumulation, capitalist accumulation is based on racial hierarchy, socialism threatens to upend that both the economic and the racial order. Anti-communist sentiment was cultivated in the U.S. as a way to preserve the status quo of capitalism. So there's always there's this idea on the one hand that socialism is fundamentally incompatible with both Western man and with the United States. And to me, that has to do with its potential to influence and incite rebellion among racialized people, specifically black people. 
In the US, advocates for black civil rights were often persecuted as being sympathetic to socialism or the USSR, a practice known as red baiting. There is a way in which people who are struggling for civil rights were pressured to disassociate themselves from communists or for people who have more radical politics and focus on a very, uh, um, very narrow demands on the state for recognition by the state that foreclosed a much more robust political economic project of liberation. One example was in 1955, when civil rights activist Paul Robeson was denied a U.S. passport because of his sympathetic views toward the USSR and because he was an avowed socialist. And so they're, re they're deemed communists, but what's equally dangerous about them is the fact that they are promoting racial equality and, um, you know, better working conditions and egalitarian participation in, in society for workers. Red baiting was also a feature of Pro. That's the FBI's counterintelligence program designed to surveil, infiltrate, discredit, and sabotage political movements the U.S. government felt were so-called subversive. We see this transform in the 1960s and 1970s into um, COINTELPRO and the, the systematic targeting of Black liberation groups like the Black Panther Party, um, like the Revolutionary Action Movement, who again are taking up these demands for self-determination for Black studies on campuses. These are considered to be red plots. The Black student unions are um, they're infiltrated by FBI workers. Despite all these efforts, anti-capitalism sentiment in the U.S. is still growing in today's movements. Socialism is having a moment in American politics right now. And that's freaking a lot of people out. And if you look at the stats, it's not a surprise. For example, the number of billionaires in the United States has more than doubled since 2008. And in the past 30 years, the wealth of U.S. billionaires increased over 1,000%. That's more than 200 times greater than the increase of U.S. median wealth over the same period. This rising economic inequality is hitting Black Americans especially hard. Before the pandemic in 2016, the net worth of white families was 10 times more than that of black families. And during the pandemic in May 2020, the black unemployment rate hit 16.8%. That's the highest in almost a decade. These realities are leading people to demand socialist policies, like canceling rent, improving food assistance, and expanding universal health care. We need help. We need a ban on evictions. We need help with our mortgages and our rents. Now, some believe that racism can be overcome and wealth can be created if only more capitalist opportunity is provided for black people. That's where concepts like black capitalism come in. This is the belief that wealth can be generated in the black community through black entrepreneurship, black ownership and business. But here's the thing, black capitalism is still operating within the framework of capitalism. This means that any wealth it generates in black communities won't be owned by those communities. That wealth will be in the hands of a few rich individuals from those communities. This is why some activists push back on the idea that racial and economic inequality can be ended by simply seeking diversity within a capitalist system that is inherently unequal. It looks as if the system cannot reform itself. We've tried black faces in high places. Too often are black politicians, professional class, middle class, become too accommodated to the capitalist economy. So what happens next? Critiques of capitalism are happening on the ground. Efforts to build alternatives to capitalism are happening right now, whether it's through sharing economies, whether it's through mutual aid. These are efforts and visions at something else that's possible. People who have been historically subjected to racialization, colonialism, and imperialism deserve the right to determine their own destiny. Hello guys. Now, after watching this video, guys, I really want to know what you think about this video in the comment section. Please, let's have this conversation. And if you're here for the first time, please subscribe. Now, I want to say this. The lady has talked about uh, the capitalism. This is a tool, I can call it a slavery tool, that uh, the government is using to suppress our people. They are 
giving it a very nice definitions and names. This is the thing that is eating us down, guys. You know, they say that slavery ended, which in real sense is not true. Slavery has been given a new name as capitalism. It has been refashioned and, and redefined as democracy and capitalism. So they made us to believe that uh, a democracy is a government of the people, for the people, by the people, and of the people. Capitalism is always for that person at the top to gain. That person at the top to make profit. That person at the top to always remain and to be the master and the provider of everything. That's the shortest definition of capitalism. So why do I say that capitalism is a slave tool? Because capitalism creates an inherent class conflict between the capital and the labor. While capitalists, the people at the top, enjoy the potential benefits for their high profits by exploiting their workers with wages that is always kept lower than the true value of the work done. They make sure that they pay you a salary that is lower than the work done to them. You find that the black Americans are significantly subjected to lower wages and household wealth than the white Americans. Because the roots of all these inequalities trace back to the central role of slaves where segregation and discrimination was given a higher priority in the economy. That's why the black people in America continue to suffer, the black Americans. Okay? And that's why I say that uh, the history of black people or the history of Africa should just be written by blacks themselves. We've been lied about so many stuff. Our minds have been westernized, colonized with this Bible. The Bible was the first tool that came to Africa. When they wanted to capture Africa, they first brought this book called Bible for us to be brainwashed about the God, the God of the white, and their Messiah. So we were taught by the missionaries who came to Africa to introduce Christianity to us and therefore we learned about Jesus Christ, we learned about the God of Abraham, the God of Joseph, the God of you know, the God of Moses, and so on and so forth. We were even made to believe that if a house goes on fire, the Bible cannot burn. They believe that the Bible is a, a holy book, the word of God. So after bringing the Bible to us, we abandoned our religion as Africans and therefore adopted a new religion which is Christianity. Those who refused to convert to Christianity were eliminated. When I say eliminated, they were unalived. So I don't believe that my ancestors, my greatest ancestors, were wrong in terms of religion. You know, the history of African continent needs to be rewritten again by people who understand it so well. But it is good that people are now waking up and uh, have now discovered that truly, Africans or black people are the true Israelites that God talked about. We are the true Israelites. Because if you look at Africa, by the way, it is in Africa here where, where we still consume fresh foods direct from the farm. We still interact with wild animals like lions, elephants. We have got giraffes. We have got uh, zebras in Africa. Tell me which continent you will find all these wild good animals. No other continent apart from Africa. It means Africa is the blessed land. And therefore we need someone who can rewrite our history the way it should be written. It is high time that we need to treat each other equally and consider equality amongst ourselves. Let us not live in a world of always I want to win, always I want to be at the top. We all want to win. Let's always be equal. You know, History of good things that are invented are always surrounded by white people. Always. They always want to take credit. They always want to take credit in whichever way possible. So it is time for the system to be challenged. Talk about capitalism. Both capitalism and democracy are fashioned slavery. They are rebranded slavery. You work really hard, but you don't see the benefit of your hard work. Your hard work or your sweat is being enjoyed by a group of people somewhere who feels like they own the world or they own the economy. Okay? Africa should restructure their own type of government and use it and kick away the so-called democracy. Democracy was not meant for Africans. 
it was never meant for us. Thank you.